Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today we continue our reservation system with Google Forms, Google Sheets and Google Apps Script. What I want to do today is to create a number of assistants. That is, that for example you have a yoga class and the yoga class has a limit of five students. Or you have a, a spa and the spa has two or three rooms per hour. So if you are, for example, a teacher and you can only teach one student per hour, so this works fine. But what happens if you can have three students each hour? Or if you have more availability than one person per slot? So what I want to have here is the availability and th this book status, uh, it only goes to booked once I have my, my limit. If my capacity is three students per hour or two customers per hour, then I could say, just when it is filled, then you stop showing this date. But if only one person has booked, then you can still show this date to another person until they book. That's it. So first, I always like to do a, a quick recap of how this works and do a test so that everything is working fine. If you're a Patreon member, you can <laughs> make sure to remind me to make you a, a small video to how to set this up if you are working from a copy of this template. Because if I do it here, I will spend 15 minutes and it's not for everyone. So I'm just going to do a quick recap of how does this work. So the first step of this is my Google Calendar. I have two calendars that I've set up in the last five videos. I have an available slot calendar and a booked slot calendar. So I will create my slots in these available slots. So I can create one here. I don't have to put a title if I don't want. I just need to make sure that it is created in the available slots calendar. So I created, let's see here, June 9th at 8 a.m. And it automatically triggered the function that updates my free and booked events. And this 9 June is the, the one that I did automatically also updates here in my form. Here you can see it. So if a customer is going to do a reservation, then he can see it here. And this is the second part of the, of the system. Once there is a form, let's submit an answer. Let's say I book this same June 9th. I submit it. So the first thing that's going to happen is that here in reservations, I'm going to have a new reservation. So I have here the record of my reservations. Then I go to options and I see that my June 9th slot at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. is booked. Perfect. And the last thing is that here in my Google Calendar, it moved my available slot to, to a book slot. So now it is easy to see which are my book slots and which are my available slots. Okay. So this is how it works and this is how it should work. So I have a lot of functions right now. I did a change. If you come from the last video, I did a change. Very simple. Here in my fill out dates function, I had in the line 78, I had the, the ID of the form. I changed it by a constant that is called form ID. And also in the find out ID of questions in the line 90, I also put this constant form ID and I went here, up here to form ID and I put the, the ID of my form here. It just makes it easier if your form changes. Okay. I have a lot of functions. This move event to book calendar function. When a new booking is made, it changes the calendar from available to book. It deletes the event from available and creates a new one in the same hour at booked. This delete all available slots. It's just a button here that makes it easy to delete all the available slots and I don't have to do it manually in my calendar. These delete all book slots, it also deletes the book slot, but you have to be very careful with this function because the customer will not know that you deleted it. Okay. The bring events, it's one of the main functions and it just brings all the available and booked events from my Google calendar. The fill out dates updates the question in my Google forms, this date of the class question. And these are two uh, just auxiliary functions that we reviewed in the first videos of this. Okay. So after the quick recap, not so quick, but now we're going to do what I wanted to do. So I don't want this to change to booked 
the moment someone books. I want to have a capacity. Uh, let's say, let's call this limit. There are two ways of doing this. I'm going to start with a simple way. I'm going to create a config sheet. Here, I'm going to put the limit. Let's say it's five or three. And here, I'm going to say current, current occupancy or something like that. This is more for hotels, but okay, this may work. So how do I do this current occupancy? Actually, we can change this, move, move it here. I need to also change this formula. So the current occupancy will be, I'm going to uh, just add up all the students from this particular date. This is easy, we're just going to do a count if. So we're going to count this column when it is this date. That's it. Actually, it's not this A, but it's this date of the class. It's the E1, my mistake. So it's reservations, E and E. Now it works. So now I have one, but my limit is three, according to this. So here in my book status, I'm going to change this. What I did was just do a VLOOKUP that if it found the date, then it will change it to book, but now it will be easier because my, my formula will be, let's put it here, let's put it a bit bigger. My formula will be that if this current occupancy is greater or equal than this number three, it should never be greater, but let's just, just in case, put it like this. If it's greater or equal, then it will be booked. And if not, it will be free or available, let's say. You have to be very careful with this because then we need to go to our code and see when did it say free, not available. So very careful when you change this at such a, an advanced stage of the project, okay? So if, if I put this, I just needed to change this config B1 and fix it with F4 so that if I drag it down, then it will always compare to this number three. Okay, so right now everything is available because nothing is greater than or equal than three. I'm going to set this up as an array formula as I had it here. So actually I'm just going to copy this formula and here, instead of all this crazy thing, I'm going to leave two parentheses and paste my if and just make sure that here it says D1 to D and that's it. Let's hit enter, let's delete all this and it looks great. And I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to copy this current occupancy I'm going to drag this up and I'm going to say count if. Uh, fortunately, count if works well with array formula. So we can say A1 to A, control shift enter. Let's hit enter again. Let's delete all this because this error is because I have other elements manually inputted. So now I just need to remove these zeros and change this header. So I can say that if a1 column a equals to double quotation mark, then just leave it as is. And if not, leave the formula. So now I fix these zeros. Now I need to fix the header. So I will put another if, that if the row of a1 column a is equal to one or equals to one, then I will put my header. Remember I had copy it earlier. So I have it here, current occupancy. That's it. Nice. It looks great. Before I can have two or three, I need to change my code, starting with these fillout dates. Because these fillout dates, remember that I told you first that be very careful when you change the values. So I'm going to change this for available. And given that this will always be available, so I don't think this will make any difference. And the other thing you need to take into account is that I added a new column. So be very careful with this because the, the book status is now in the column number five. So I need also to change this here. This will not be row three, but row four. Why row four and no row five? Because 
remember the arrays start in number zero. And also here, I need to double check because here I'm moving from column number one to column number four. So I'm doing to this, so I'm not checking this one. So I'm going to do it up to five. Again, when you're so advanced in a project, you need to be very careful when you change things. Okay, let's save. Let's run my fill out dates and see if our reservation system works well. I'm going to update here if my form is updating correctly. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dates. Is does is the same seven dates. So even if I have some book slots, now that my formula doesn't say booked, then okay. it works great. Let's put another one here on June 9th, 8 a.m. Let's submit. And now here I have two. So the moment I have three, this will change to booked. Actually, I'm going to delete this one and put it again. I hope it doesn't cause any stress. Let's do it again, just so it is available. That's it. Let's see here. I should, shouldn't have a problem. Excellent. Works well. Now I'm going to book once again, the same date. June 9th, let's submit. So now it is booked because I've reached my limit of three students. Now let's see if I refresh this. Now I don't have my June 9th and here. The only thing is that this is booked, but I need to change it because this is changing it every time there is uh, one. So this, this should only change once there is three. So this is a bit trickier to do because right now my move event to book calendar is triggered every time there is a form sent. It is a bit more complicated, but now given that I have my events before I delete the event, I can get the ID. I can look for this ID here, it's this one, and see the current occupancy. If it's three or if this is booked, whichever, then I can change it to booked. Only if this happens, okay? So I have my ID, then I'm going to look for my ID in this table, but I need to bring this table. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect with my option sheet. So this will be sheet it will be spreadsheet up dot get sheet by name get active spreadsheet sorry and get sheet by name my name will be options then i'm going to create my event table and it will be in my option sheet i'm going to look for a specific range with get range in the row number two and the column number two, remember what I need is this. Actually, I just need this column, the event column. So I will say get range, a row, it, will, it may be row number one, it doesn't matter, column number two, and up to the last row. So it will be options sheet dot get last row and get values. So now I have my column. The thing with this column is that it comes uh, with an array. It, it is an array of arrays. So I need to remove it from the, from each individual array, because what I want to do is look for my event and I can only look in a simple array. And this is an array of arrays. I don't know if maybe I'm uh, overcomplicating things or, or complicating my explanation, but the thing is I need to do a map function, the map function very easily we'll take each row and for each row just take the first element of the row that's it not more and we could save this again in my event table i don't think it's a problem and then here let's call this variable id and with the method index of i can look in my event table for my id let's say now we're going to try with this one so it will look for this and then i will tell my script look at this current occupancy 
what number do you see? So actually, I told you that I only need one row, one column, but I do need more columns. So I need one, two, three, four columns. So this is it, four. And this, I'm not going to save it in the same event table, but in a new variable called event list. And here, I'm not going to do event table index of, but event list index of. And now let's call this index. Now I will need to look in my event table, in the row index and in the column one, one, two, three, in the column three, the number three. And I'm going to say that if event table index three is equal equals to three, then I will change my event from available to booked. I did all this just to uh, improve my move event to book calendar function. That's it. If not, you don't have to do anything. You don't need to change anything. That's it. Let's see if it works. Let's save. And we're going to work with this slot in the June 7th. So I'm going to go to June 7. Let's submit. Now I have a mistake. Let's see. Event table is not a function. Let's see. Uh, I put this with, with parentheses and I should have put it with uh, square brackets. That's it. Let's save. And now let's submit it again. This is this one. Let's submit. Now I have two because I did the last one wasn't able to submit. This is booked. So actually I need to change this to just to see if it works. I'm going to delete this one. I'm to create it again, but as a, at the same hour, but as an available one in the available calendar. Let's save. Let's see if it, this updates and this looks good. So I have two again. Now I'm going to do a final reservation. Let's cross our fingers. Again, the seventh. Submit. So now this is booked. Let's see if this worked. It didn't work. Okay, why? And now I see where my mistake was. Let's go to my code. And here I'm saying that index three is equals to three. But actually it's not zero, one, two, three. This is should be equals to booked not to three, one of two, or I change this to column number two and say that in column number two, this is three, or I change this to, I leave the column number three and say, this is booked. Any of, of those two will work. Let's put this in the two, let's save, and let's do our final one. June 6th, let's submit. Let's see, now this is booked and it worked. Perfect, so I think, a little bit confusing and uh, just to change this, but I think it worked. So it's very nice. Now you can just go to your config and change this to whatever number you want, two, five, 10, 11, and it will only change to booked once it reaches its current capacity. That's it. <laughs> Sorry if I went a bit astray, but still, I hope you like it. As always, you can support me just by subscribing to the channel or by subscribing to the Patreon page where you can not only support me, but you can access these templates, you can download them and you don't have to do all the code yourselves. You can start from a fully working template. Thank you so much and see you next time.